With presents open, crackers pulled and Santa back up north for another year, it seems like the perfect time to reflect on this year's biggest updates. Welcome to the Boxing Day Behind the Scenes. They've bribed us with food to come and talk about our top 10 updates of the year. So without further ado, let's get into number 10, which is Rune Improvements. Because we brought out a D&D &D with that, it wasn't just the Rune values that changed. Yeah. Um, and that's like the most consistently played D&D &D that we've got, um, other than people stumbling on penguins, but that's, that's just a bit <laughs> of fun. It's not often we release a piece of content that goes into most people's daily routine. Mm -hmm. I know for me yeah. it has, and I know, as you say, quite a lot of other people are doing it yeah. every day now. Get those divination locations. In at number nine, we have uh, a quest. Oh, so cool. it is Fate of the Gods. It was massive for us. It was a massive change for us to do graphically. You know, with something yeah. Like, you know, it was a huge graphical job. Yeah, I mean, going yeah. to a whole new, well, it was a whole new planet, wasn't it? Was, it? Yeah, really you had much. great fun doing that. Oh, it was like gloves off. It was fantastic. <laughs> you know, absolutely crazy with it. And obviously there's the mystery of Zaros. You haven't seen him before. Yeah. He's finally coming back. I like, the, I like the Iron Man cutscene. <laughs> yeah. like, I remember when all the concept art started coming through, and you just see yeah. it, and you're like, oh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was really good. I, I like trying to stop Marco from, uh, sorry, Mod Mark, from revealing it at RuneFest. Yeah. You couldn't stop him. <laughs> he was going to show Can't. it at RuneFest. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, for me, it wasn't just the quest, because it came with, well, kind of associated content of ancient combat. Uh, Elder yeah. Divination, yeah. like yeah. Uh, it, like the Musper challenges, not the challenges, the Musper Slayer task afterwards, like they're all really popular as well. So there's a lot that came along with uh, Frenesque. So going for number eight, maybe controversial, we're going for RuneFest. So not actually yeah. a game update, we're going for uh, RuneFest. It was a good one. Best, great, best, right? yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, it was good. Everybody kind of felt like, uh, uh, like the JMOD challenges, for example, yes, where you're yeah. going up to talk to individual JMODs and there was a reason to chat to them, you know, you're going to fist pump uh, Mod Ollie or <laughs> talk to me about your favourite quest, it was great. I had, who would you kill in RuneScape? And I like, I had players coming up saying, oh, I'm going to kill this person. Oh, no, wait, maybe this person. You put so much thought into it. I was like, I just need a name, really. <laughs> and I'll sign your paper. <laughs> but it was fun. <laughs> And the yeah. first year you could do absolutely any part of it just using bonds as well. Yeah, like yes, people yeah. buying flights, flight, that's, yeah, pretty, hotel, that's pretty special. Yeah. yeah, like half of the tickets were bought with bonds and we had people who'd flown over, got accommodation, got the tickets, bought all their food, all with their in-game wealth. That's an achievement, I think. Yeah. Very proud of that. Okay, hmm. number seven, are we ready? I think, I think Mod Chris L might like this one. It's, it's a Raxor. And at seven, what do you think? Yeah. Should be higher? Number higher? one. <laughs> <laughs> that's the number one. It was fun to make, I and mean, I really like the build-up to it because, like, me and the, the guys who are QAing it, like, every week we tweet like an extra screenshot, and a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah. It started with like the most rubbish map you can imagine, like <laughs> grey tiles, and they're like, "What's this going to be?" And then slowly they got a spider, and then all this stuff. And we did a really big stream that you're pretty not like into, and it was like topped room fest, I think. Yeah, that was like, I think our mo most, most watched stream was the Araxor yeah. preview with the gigantic spider marauding across the Alcrid desert and people transforming yeah. into smaller spiders like across multiple worlds as yeah. well. Like, yeah. that was fantastic. So in at number six is an update that killed me more than Araxor. It's Iron Man mode. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were surprised by it almost, weren't we, with just how yeah. popular it was. It was different for us as well. Most stuff this year has been generally pole driven, um, but this kind of sneaked in from the side. Yeah. Like we were like, let's, oh, it's really popular. Let's, let's kind of have a go at doing it on kind of off schedule a bit. And we announced it and it got loads of interest and we realised like, yeah, we've got to take this more seriously. Like we need to get it through development, get it in the player's hands. And I think it's the first time we've done a pre, like a, a beta, but in the live game, we had like 150 people playing it. I still love seeing like the death announcements for Hardcore Iron Man all the time. Well. Yeah. You see, and what they're killed by now as well. Yeah, uh, you see people like nearly like like total level 2000, like fighting, PKing, like losing a PVP duel and losing their account. That mm. is that is brave. All right, we're halfway through. So number five, we have uh, Game Blast and some of the other charity events that have happened this year. That was a pretty epic 24-hour stream. God, game, game Blast, yeah, that was, oh, yeah. That was a trial. <laughs> but it was well worth it, obviously, for special effects. I mean, yeah, raised, raised so much money. Um, thanks so much to the players for it. I think it's nice with the wishing well as well, like people who might have more in-game wealth than you know, out of game, and it's nice of them to be able to give something, yeah. whereas they might not be able to otherwise. I think it's yeah. really cool. And credit with where it's due with Games Blast. There were some people who really kind of threw themselves into it. You know, there's Mod Allen with his, obviously, his ghost chillies. Oh, and he's waxing. Oh, yeah. Never unsee it. 
Okay, so in at number four, we're getting pretty high now, is uh, game improvements and, and ninja fixes. Yeah, so the kind of no core ninja. game improvements. Yeah, yeah. There you go, number four. Oh, God. My hat, I got too excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gone. <laughs> oh, yeah, ninja's, yeah, ninja's awesome. That's all I've got to say about this. A lot more people will read the patch notes now, which I think yeah. is a, yeah. like, some people it's a go, good signal. Yeah. Some people yeah. say they read the patch notes before they read the main update now, which is quite nice. I can't, I can't imagine playing without like presets it's now. It's funny how used you get to it, that um, at that point you're like, oh my god, finally this update so I can have my aura, where actually it's already so much easier, so much slicker and nicer to use. And, uh, but yeah, within about a week, I was the same as everyone else. Like, oh my god, I've got an aura on, why can't I? It is weird, like, if you think each week we put a few fixes out, and you might think, oh, it's a couple of fixes. Over the year, if you look at the actual things that have changed, it's actually quite substantial. Mm -hmm. We should roll it all back and see what happens right the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So talking about fixes, I think there's been a fix, because number three is uh, the Elf City. It's, no. it's uh, number three. Slow. Three. It's not number one. I know, three, I know. Three. Devastated. Because <laughs> I talked to Mod Elfborn and he assured me it was at least number two. Yeah, I, uh, he's he's not he's one to bribe. Um, so no, I'm, I'm expect I yeah expecting higher. Me. Chocolate, bread, and <laughs> <laughs> bacon mound. Yeah. There it is. The secret's out. But yeah, I mean it, it's kind of almost coloured the whole year because obviously January was the poll. Um, for Elf City vs. Inventor. Well, yeah, it like? was really close. So to think mm. what this year would have been with, with Inventor, obviously. For me, um, the design docs were almost as big a thing as Elf City. That was massive. I've never seen anyone do that before. Um, that was it's a yeah, lot of work. That was huge. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't, know how, I don't know how you work out does that stack up in terms of was it worth it, but it's amazing. Like, it's unique. I think that's something we started doing a lot with like every project is kind of being more open with the community about what we're going to do and accepting their changes before release and stuff like that. So I think El City was kind of the start of that, I think. It is a massive, massive hub that players have a huge amount of content. You see all sorts of skills getting trained there, but it's also not the only thing that they do. You see people doing things, launching off. Even like there the are really good um, quality of life elements to it, like the portals, um, that just, yeah, they mean they can, they can be a springboard to do other things. It's good. So you're probably guessing what's number two if Elf City is number three. It's Elf City Batch 2. No, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's, um, <laughs> it's um, Revolution and Legacy mode. Yeah. yeah. New combat modes, of course. A year later, most players are using one of those two modes from where we were yeah. before. So I think that showed a really big change in how people go about combat. Did anyone anticipate the effect that it was going to have? No, we had, we had fairly we high it hopes for it, well. I think. We had a lot of traction on the forum thread, yeah. and like I put together a prototype, and we polished it up, and it was it was almost, it was pre-legacy as well, wasn't it? And it, already like with that initial release, loads of people were on it, and then I think Pi worked on like ability queue, and it it changed it all, and people used it as a good stepping stone into it. That that learning difficulty they had before really helped them get into it, and then legacy obviously hopefully you know, brings people back, and then it's that stepping stone in. Yeah. Full combat is next on my list once I start bossing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that brings us to number one. So, Whoa. drum roll, go on. It's player power. Yeah! Uh, had to be, really. Go on, champion it, player power. It's, it's been a great year for us. Yeah, it's been a big change for how we've worked. We, we said that one of the things we wanted to do in 2014 was give players much more control over what we did. And I think we've done pretty well. We worked it out when we counted them the other day. Um, it's like we did so far this year, 20 guaranteed content polls using the old parlance for things. And there's been like 30 more for the detail of what the content will be. Yeah. And, you know, I'll, you look back over what we've released this year, the vast majority of it has been chosen and shaped by the players. I'm really proud of that. Something I really like about polls is that when you read the forums and stuff, you get people's opinions, but like, it's a small subset of players. When you have a poll, you get so many players giving their opinion. Yeah. It's so useful to know kind of the majority vote. 10, 10 million votes and counting. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I was going to say, because when you, like, Elf City, I was expecting that probably number one. Um, but you think, actually, when you, when you say player power and you look over the rest of the top 10 that we talk about, like, it does cut into almost everything we've done. Yeah. Um, and I think for me, that's the, that's the beauty of, of RuneScape, is just how rich that mix is. That you don't, you start off thinking, well, what's physical content, what bit of Gillenor did I like best this year? But it's not, it's not necessarily about that. Like, there's no bit of Gillenor that's, you know, um, combat mode and, and there's no bit of Gillenor that's player power, it's everything. And they, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, it's good stuff. 
There you have it, our 10 top updates of the year. Do you agree? Of course you don't, but uh, get on the polls and vote yourselves. And they'll also go on the forums to tell us what you really liked this year. And so all that's left to do is to say happy Boxing Day and uh, happy new year to everyone. Cheers. Happy new year. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Next week, Modmark lifts the lid on some of January's biggest updates, including a huge player-owned ports expansion.